rise to the singing of our national anthem. Graduates, I invite you to turn around to face the American flag. Welcome to all the parents, the grandparents, the many faculty and staff members who are here, family and friends joining us this evening to celebrate this incredible milestone, graduation of the class of 2021, Tafshin Pei Aleph. Thank you to the ATT and the Jewish Federation for their ongoing support and partnership, as well to the Fairview School, our wonderful neighbors for their use of their parking lot this evening. Every graduation represents a significant milestone, but this year's for many of us is particularly emotional. The fact that our graduates were able to learn in person this year and have had and enjoyed many special programs and experiences despite the craziness swirling around us has been truly incredible. And the fact that we're able to gather here in person this evening to celebrate them is just amazing. At graduation, we always reflect back on the past nine years or 11 years to think about and appreciate all the people who have invested so much in your education, growth and development. Tonight, we have an added obligation to express our gratitude and hakarat hatov to all those who helped us through this pandemic and arrive at this moment tonight. To my amazing colleagues, the members of the Hillel Torah administration who work tirelessly and give of themselves for our students and families and probably have not slept much in the past 14 months, Mrs. Tamar Friedman, Mrs. Miriam Kaplow, Jenny Wasserman, Rabbi Aaron Bolgel, Dov Shandalov, Karen Felix, and Ed Plotkin. <laughs> to all of your incredible Rebbeim Morot teachers and advisors, many of whom are here and came out to celebrate you tonight, who've invested so much in your growth over the years. And a special shout out to your Mechan Chim this year, Rabbi Liebteg and Mrs. Rosenbaum. <laughs> to all our office staff, the behind the scenes, the people who do it all, our secretaries, our security, our maintenance crew, who took care of you every single day and who were so essential in helping us get through this year. To Jonathan Weiss, our board president and parent this evening, and the entire board of directors who have steadily navigated these uncharted waters. <laughs> to our PTA, under the leadership of Hillary Rosenthal and Rachel Gelman joining us this evening, who have taken care of our teachers and staff so that they can take care of you. To all our parents sitting here this evening, You've worked tirelessly over the years to support your children in every way, and even more so this year. We know how challenging this year was on families. The extra Zoom weeks, those daily carpools morning and afternoon, the symptoms, the quarantines, it was certainly not an easy year. Thank you. Acharon, Acharon, Chaviv, thank you 
to the students, the class of 2021, for all the resilience that you've shown during this incredibly challenging time. Instead of giving up, you inspired us by the way you kept your spirits up. You appreciated just being able to come to school in person and relished all of the programs that were adapted and adjusted for you. You made a difficult year into an amazing one, which really speaks volumes to who you are. Call a kavod. Tonight, you will have a chance to hear some beautiful words from a number of our graduates who will be speaking on behalf of their entire class, sharing divrei Torah and reflections on their years at Hillel Torah. To start us off, let's give our attention to Nava Dreitzer for the opening Tehillim. the class of 2021 to 8th grade graduation. We are all so happy that you were able to join us today. I would like to share a parak of Tehillim that connects to this year's graduating class and the challenges we have faced as well and how much we have grown at our time at Hillel Torah and to this year's school theme, Mechubarim, connected. The parak that I chose is Parak Kuf Lama Gimel. Shiamalo David. Talks about how good it is for us to all be mechuarim, connected. Shebe achim gam I would like to explain the following. Pasuk. Ketal chermon sheirad al ha'arisiyon ki sham siva adonai et tebracha chayim adolam. This pasuk describes how unity and connectedness give strength and life to us, like the dew on har chermon that flows down and brings blessing and life to the land below and around it. We have all grown so much from kindergarten to now. Over the past nine years at Hello Torah, we have grown through Judaic and general studies, as well as developing our spiritual connection with Hashem. We have also acquired many Mido, from Chesed to Trust and Amuna. We have learned many skills as well, from learning the ABCs in all of Bet to learning Rashi in third grade. And of course, the fourth grade state fair, we learned the amazing song, Toward the States. During middle school, we learned an inspiring skill for us to have for life, to have many more competences, and sing Tati my king. And of course we learn the Malacha of Shabbos this year that will help us enhance every Shabbos in the future. We have all grown as individuals and as a grade, and we have accomplished so much together. The Pasuk Kital Khermon Shayrad Al Haritzion Ki Sham Siva Alona Etabracha Chaim Adalam connects to us in particular to this year and all the difficult challenges we had to face. One challenge we had this year was with COVID-19. From wearing masks to social distancing to Zoom learning and not having all of the activities that an eighth grade class would have, this was not the year we all expected before COVID. However, we are so grateful that we were able to remain in person this year and we made it all work and had an amazing final year at Hillel Torah. Another challenge has been the recent violence in Israel and the anti-Semitism even in our own communities. And we face this challenge to the Jewish nation. However, once again, like it says in Tehillim Parakuf Lamagimot, our unity and connectedness gave us strength to get through these difficulties. We joined together physically in a rally in Skokie, spiritually in accepting more mitzvot and davening with greater kavana for the merit of those in need. And by thinking about more acts of chesed, we could do to help. To Helene Parakuf Lama Gimel, Melomedo Tanu Shiza Hashu, Liyo Mechubarim. Tamide Kitaha, Hayume Hubarim, Kola Shanim Shalani, the Hilo Torah. Ben as Manim Tobim, Ben as Manim Kashim. Hachdu Shalanu, Ezra Lanu, Lehipateach, the Gam of Ha, Etas Man Shalana, the Veha Sefer, was Mame O Kefi. Todala Kohamorim, the Rabbanim Shalanu, the Rav Linzer, the Gabera. 
Freeman וברי קפואל. ותודה לכל ההורים במשפחה שלנו. תודה לכל הכיתה שלי על החברים שלכם במשך השנים. אני מאחלת לכם ברכה שתמיד נמשיך להיות מחוברים כל השנים שלנו. This parak of Tehillim has taught us to be strong and connected, no matter what challenges we face or things we have accomplished together. A message that we can learn from this parak of Tehillim is for us to all be connected. A bracha that I would like to give my fellow classmates is that we should stay connected no matter where life takes us in the future. Mazel tov to the class of Toshin Pei Aleph. go. Yashikoach Nava for those beautiful words. Gives me great pleasure now to share with you a brief thought, brief Torah thought and a, and a bracha to go with it. First of all, I neglected to mention before, but we do have actually a guest from the ATT with us, Rabbi Shimon Muller. Avram Shimon Muller is joining us. Thank you for being here tonight. I know it wasn't easy and for all the ATT does to serve our schools and the broader Chicago Jewish community. Dear graduates, Talmidim Karim, in this week's parasha, we will read the famous story of Korach and his followers who rebel against Moshe and Aaron. The Mishnah in Pirkei Avot describes Korach as the paradigm of the person who creates negative conflict. The Mishnah says, Kol machloket shehi l'shem shamayim sofa lehit kayem. Any dispute that's for the sake of heaven will eventually be lasting. However, a dispute that is not for the sake of heaven will not last. What are some examples? What is a machloket that is for the sake of heaven? The famous disputes between Hillel and Shammai and Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai that you've learned in your Gemara classes and the Mishnah. What is the best example of a machloket that is not for the sake of heaven, zo machloket korach ve'adato, the disputes and the arguments of Korach and his people. So while Hillel and Shammai had many arguments, as we know, almost every page of the Gemara is filled with arguments with Hillel and Shammai, their intentions were always for the sake of heaven, to uncover the truth of the Torah. These debates, therefore, were so falahit kayem, they made a positive difference in the world. However, Korach and his followers, they used the conflict to advance, as we know the story, their own personal desires for honor and their own personal interests, which did not only not contribute to society, but as we know, led to their untimely demise as they were swallowed up by the earth and the rest died in a plague. In fact, the Gemara describes that despite their hundreds of arguments, Beit Hilo and Beit Shammai were actually close friends and that family members married one another despite their arguments about those very same matters of halachic issues relating to marriage. How is this possible? Unfortunately, it's hard to understand. In our society, we see so much polarization these days. If people disagree about politics or other issues, they could barely speak to each other. How is it possible Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel were at such odds and yet got along so well? The answer is the Mishnah teaches that their debates were not personal. They were l'shem shamayim, for the sake of heaven, for Torah, and that despite their disagreements, they were able to appreciate and respect one another. You see, different opinions and preferences between people can often, unfortunately, lead to conflict. I don't agree with you. I don't like the way you say, the way you do something. I don't like your taste in music, your food and food and art. Therefore, we can't be friends. We can't get along. And in some cases, we can't even speak to each other. Rav Cook, however, took a different perspective. Some of you, over years that you've been in my office, for good reasons, of course, you may have seen the picture of Rav Cook on the back wall and a quote of Rav Cook on another wall. I'm obviously a big fan. Rav Cook explains that it does not have to be this way. In fact, he says that differences between people are actually a natural and healthy part of society. That by disagreeing in a healthy way, we can actually enhance one another and bring out the deeper truth that lies beneath. Think of it like a symphony. We're listening to beautiful music this evening. 
if all there was in the orchestra were tubas, or all there were were violins, the music wouldn't sound great. It's precisely the fact that there are different instruments all playing at the same time that makes the music so glorious and so beautiful. Similarly, we don't all need to be the same and to look the same and think the same in order to have shalom, in order to get along and have peace. In fact, Rav Cook describes something called shalom pnimi, inner peace, true peace, that when we appreciate each other's differences, respect each other, and use healthy debate to enhance and clarify each other's perspectives, we could achieve that. My dear students, one of the many things that's always amazed me about your grade is how cohesive you are. Now, for sure, you're all very different. We saw beautifully last week when your teachers each gave you different awards and the, award, the caricatures that Mor Hadass and Mrs. Kakon made up for you showed that each of you is unique. Each of you has different interests. Each of you has different talents. Each of you has so many unique strengths. And over the years, you've matured and you've grown together as one unit, as one grade, despite these differences. I can tell you firsthand as a parent in this wonderful grade, I've had the chance to get to know you even more closely. And I've seen firsthand the way you appreciate each other, the way you accept each other for who you are, who each of you are, is, and the way you celebrate each other and build each other up. That's not something to be taken for granted and not something that one sees every day. As Nava mentioned, in the spirit of our school theme this year, you are truly mechubarim. You are connected to each other in such a deep way. And together you create this beautiful symphony whose music is inspiring and uplifting to all of us. And if I had to guess at why, why this is so, what makes you so special, I think one of the reasons that your grade can be so unified in the way it is, is the strong quality of L'Shem Shamayim that motivates you and characterizes you. Unlike Korach, you go beyond yourselves. I've seen the way you take serving Hashem seriously, as, as is evident in your tefillah and the beautiful davening that, that I used to see you do in school. The seriousness of your Torah learning, the sincere desire to understand halacha and to observe halacha, and the way you treat each other and the way you think about others. You look for ways to help. You look for ways to go beyond yourselves and make a difference in the world around you. And now, as you move on to high school, I know it's hard to believe, you're going to have even more opportunities to put this trait of L'Shem Shamayim, to think about others and to go beyond yourself, to put it into practice. So I'm going to end with a bracha, my bracha tonight to you on behalf of your parents, your teachers, all of us here, is that you continue to develop this special quality of L'Shem Shamayim. Everything you do should be L'Shem Shamayim, which means to go beyond yourselves, not to, not to do with things out of self-interest, but to go beyond yourselves, to strive to continue to grow in your avodat Hashem and to make a positive difference in the lives of others. By doing so, as the Mishnah teaches, you will be so falahit kayem, you will be destined to make a positive impact and a difference in the world, which will be everlasting. And you will also thereby continue to grow even closer as a unit, as a grade, because after all, you will forever be the class of 2021, Tufshin Pei Aleph. We're so proud of you tonight. Mazal Tov. Now it gives me great pleasure to call up Avi Meyer for a Dvar Torah. Ahoy, Sadiqim and Sadiqo. I am so happy to see that everyone could join us here today. Before I start my Dvar Torah, I want to say thank you to all the teachers and administration for making these years at Hill Torah the best they could have been. I have learned so much more than I ever could have imagined. As I mentioned, I brought here today a Dvar Torah that I think really connects to our greed and is a message we should remember. I would like to talk about Bilam. Bilam had been hired by Balak to go curse B'nai Israel. However, every time he attempted to fill, fulfill his mission, he ended up blessing the Jewish people instead. On the final time, when he reached the nation, he looked down over them and said, Matovu Alecha Yaakov Mishkonetecha Yisrael, which means, look how beautifully they are encamped. Once again, this was supposed to be a curse, but ended up being a blessing. What exactly is the blessing? Is 
What exactly is the blessing that Bilam is blessing the Jews? Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch states that not only were Bnei Israel encamped according to their tribes, but also by household and family unit, all bound with the common focus of fulfilling Hashem's laws, meaning they all respect each other's privacy, but united in their mission of serving Hashem. When Bilam saw this, he was unable to curse the Jewish people because how could he curse a nation that respected each other as much as we did, and how we came together as a nation to serve Hashem? When I look back at our years at Hill Torah, here's what I see. Matovu alecha Yaakov. I see agree that learned together for nine years, five every day, five days a week. We learned so much from each other and enjoyed each other's company. Whether it was class projects like the state fair, names not numbers, hot wheels in science, or field trips like Camp Shy, downtown Chicago, Nagila, or the Shabbaton, we have all grown together we've all grown together as a class. Each of us in our own way, but at the same time united together. Bilam proves to us the impact of being united. The only reason that Bilam was un unable to curse the Jews is because he saw our, our unique friendship. They each respect each other for who they were, but accepted their differences. Yet at the same time, we were, un we were able to unite under one mission, much like what we are seeing around the world today. So many Jews across the world feel connected to each other because we all daven for Israel's safety. I would like to give our grade a blessing, just like Bilam did to us a long time ago. Next year, we will all be freshmen in high school, which I know may come, might come as a shock to some. I hope that everyone will succeed and overcome any obstacles along the way. Congratulations on succeeding, the first out of many chapters of our lives. And remember that when we are united, we are unstoppable. Baba Booey. Beautiful, Avi. Please give your attention now to Talia Linzer for Divrei Chizuk. Hi, everyone. I wanted to start off by saying thank you to everyone who came, and a special thank you to my grade. I am beyond grateful for you guys, and I'm so excited to continue with you in high school. Now remember, don't forget to donate to Hillel Torah. Wait, Dad, I didn't see you out of that sin. Right before Pesach, the 6th through 8th grades had an amazing opportunity to ask questions to one of our gedolim, to one of our gedolei hador, Rabbi Shechter. When Rabbi Liebtag was introducing the program to us, he referred to Rabbi Shechter in the third person. He said, does the Rav have time for questions? Demonstrating Kavod HaTorah. This made it very clear that as eighth graders, we were sitting in front of a true leader of our generation. And that's when I started to realize how far we've come in our Jewish identity over our years at Hillel Torah. Our theme this year in school has been Mechubarim, connecting the dots. And as we look back, so much of our Jewish growth has all been connected. Mechubarim Lemesora. We have grown in our connection to our history. From fifth grade, where we led the school in a Yom HaShoah play, to interviewing, a, to, inter, to interviewing a survivor who went through one of the darkest times in our history for our Names Not Numbers interviews. These experiences have helped us connect with our Jewish roots. Mechubarim la'aret Israel. We have also grown closer to our homeland Israel. From our pretend Israel trip in nursery where we got passports and tickets to eighth grade where we led our whole school in the Yom Hatzma'ut Tekes we took on the responsibility of making the Israeli pride come alive. Through these experiences, we were able to express our love for the state of Israel. Mechubarim la Torah. HaTorah madricha mechavenet et hachayim shalanu. Behilo Torah lamanu ech lilmod Torah umefarshim. Mekabala chuma shalanu bekita bet shalamanu ech liftoch limso perek bepasuk velikro bachumash. Lakita Gimel Shalamanu Likro Lahavin et Perush Rashi Vehalinu et Hatagat Rashi Lakito Hativat Havinaim Sham Lamanu Lakir Pashanim Mitkufot Shono Lamanu Mishnayo Vegamara Velamanu Sheyesh Olam Shalem Malet Torah Bulivu Vehoshnia Shalimu Torah Hashua Mechubarim Lashem Our connection with Hashem is one of the most crucial parts of our growth. The feeling we all felt when, 
when, re when we received our first sitter to Tehilo Tai, which has helped us explore new outlets to connecting with God. We have seen our growth we have made in davening. From Halal together in school to singing down the hallways, Mishanichas Adar. We enjoy expressing our Jewish pride and have fun doing it. Every step of the way, we have grown closer to Hashem and to each other. All of these moments have shown our growth as great and as Jews. In fact, Rabbi Soloveitchik says that this was the mistake of Korach, as we'll read this Shabbos. Korach argued that everyone was holy. Ki kol da kulam ktoshim. Rabbi Soloveitchik explained that yes, on a communal level, we all share an equal holiness as the Jewish people. But on a personal level, we each can develop a very deep individual connection with Hashem. As I sat there listening to Rabbi Shachter, I realized just how far we have come as young B'nai and Banot Torah. We were asking halachic questions to one of our gedolim. Looking back on that moment, it shows us how fortunate we were to speak to someone with so much Torah knowledge, which someday we hope to achieve. Without our Morot Rebbeim teachers and administration, we would not be the people we are today. On so many levels, each has played such an important role and impacted us in so many ways. From the beginning, Hilo Torah has guided us and given us all the tools to find and develop our Jewish identity. Now it is our turn to make our marks and continue to lead the way. Shakoach Talia. I now invite you to look at this amazing screen behind me to view a special video celebrating our graduates as they look back at their years at Hillel Torah. Hello Torah sets a fun foundation for education. Some happy memories I have from younger grades is being able to see the older kids and doing activities with them and meeting the older kids when we were like the youngest. I grew up looking forward to being the older kids leaving school and like for the younger kids to look up to us. When I was in kindergarten, we always had like a Friday snack for Shabbos. It was always so much fun. And then this one week we made stone soup when we read a book and then we actually made it in class. I vividly remember that as like one of like, the best like Friday snacks I've ever had. The sitter play was the first uh, thing that we did at Hill Torah as like a class. It was very meaningful. We got our sitarim. It was like the first thing that we accomplished in like first grade and I still have the sitter. Reading workshop was one of the best things that we did for me in, um, in elementary school. The teachers would help us um, get the books that were correct for us and um, all the teachers that I had that did teach reading, uh, that did teach reading workshop, Ms. Weinstein, Ms. D, um, were all really amazing at just finding every kid the right type of book so that everyone wanted to read. <laughs> Learning about um, Jewish holidays in, in Hill Torah was really amazing and it really impacted me because I took what I learned from Hill Torah and applied it to how I did it at home. It was just really cool to see like how everyone else does it and just make connections. I think starting in elementary school, we would go on Fridays to the computer lab and we would use different websites to learn how to type better with like all with all your fingers and uh, without looking at the keyboard. A lot of the materials we used to learn were online, so by learning and just going to class I was able to use computers more and therefore throughout the years improve in how well I can manage and uh, navigate on a computer. The third grade Chicago trip is a trip to downtown Chicago where we get to go to the Willis Tower, a boat tour, and to the Bean. Uh, at the Bean we got to eat our lunch and on the boat it was very nice. We got to see the skyline of Chicago. It was a really fun trip. Being in plays from third to fifth grade was really fun and a really cool experience for me to kind of just like 
be like have a new hobby and see like what I could do. I also gained a lot of confidence um, from like being in like lead roles and it felt like a big accomplishment to me. State fair was a project we did in fifth grade. We every um, person got a state. They would research it. They would put together a little project, and we would end up showing the rest of the school. It was our first big project, and we were able to show our creativity and show our hard work. We were able to see ourselves, and the rest of the school was able to see also. Hillatora has so many opportunities to offer. Two classes that really helped me improve my writing was um, language arts and Jewish history. I had so many homework assignments and essays, and just rereading my work just helped me have better grades. I've grown in my Judaic studies by understanding like the meaning of what the Gemara is saying. Every year, like, we focused a lot on Gemara and all that type of stuff, and so from that, every year a little more, I was able to understand it like, a little more. I think davening at Hillatora means a lot of things. I guess you really feel like you're part of like a real minion there. Being a Chazan, I feel like, you know, I'm leading everybody, I know what I'm saying. A lot of teachers have helped me grow in the davening. For example, Rabbi Litek really helped me understand the words davening and really helped and it impacted my davening and helped me grow religiously. Chazan in middle school is a really special opportunity. Unfortunately, with COVID, we didn't get to do that. But a positive about that is that we were able to talk and help people who were out of town. When we were doing Char Share It, we were able to hear from a breast cancer survivor that was in New York. And like, out of a year that was so hard for everyone, I think that that's a big plus. This year, as one of our Chesed um, programs, we got to pack packages for um, Char Share It, which is like an organization for women with breast and ovarian cancer. So um, we did a drive that everyone could bring all these items for the organization, which we packed in like these bags and gave it to Sharsharet, which is really fun. Extracurriculars mean a lot to me. You know, they're a way to have like fun things I want to do outside of school. Yearbook was challenging at some times, but I really liked having that leadership role and being able to help my peers and make a book to remember ourselves by. Field day was really fun. We each got a different grade or two to do activities with, and it was really fun planning with our group. And we had to think about ways it would be COVID safe with social distancing and like the cohorts. And for me also, it was really fun because I was a yearbook photographer, so I got to take a lot of pictures. And it was just really fun because the whole grade was just doing one thing and everyone had a role to do. The Hour of Code taught me uh, the basics of programming. Since uh, school sometimes stresses me out, kind of just helps me calm down. I can code what I want, ideas I get through the day, and then I get all that off my mind, and then, I, and then I'm ready to learn. No day goes by in Hello Toro without some type of activity or Kumsit, and I love that I get to be with my friends every day. Being a part of a Kumsit at Hello Toro just brings so much happiness. You get to sit and sing your heart out that I get to wake up and be excited to come and learn because I know that there's always something to look forward to. Two attires, we each got a pair of Kaptila, but this year we did a uh, psyche. And you explain the psyche, and then you do an art project about it, and then you come all together with your, with your mothers, and you explain it, and you each present your own psyche or pair. So it was really great. During Yom Ma'ut, Everything stops and we all kind of take a break and we all connect everything to like just Israel. And it just really helps everyone kind of get a better idea of how amazing it is. And so when I traveled with my family to Israel, I feel way more connected. Mrs. Kakon went into depth about 
Israel and what's going on now. And she also explained how Israel was founded and, and it helped me learn because you felt that you were included in the class and you actually got to participate. And even if you didn't know the correct answer, you were still like called on and you were still involved. I think the Benoche route like really helped us kind of feel more connected with Israel. Like they talk to us in Hebrew, they help us learn more, they tell us about their life in Israel and also like they make sure that we all know that we can always talk to them. They're kind of like a sibling, they're always with us. This year was my first year at Hillel Torah and it was really nice to walk into a school when there was clearly a sense of community and I think that automatically made it easier for me to make friends and that's also made the learning environment at school more comfortable. It made school more fun. I've been able to make many friends and what we learn in class is always fun. There's always something nice going on and it's really nice to learn with all our good teachers, a lot of good teachers. It'll definitely be a memory that I'll have forever. Having Miss D get married in our grade was actually really exciting because we got to like kind of like celebrate it. Making personal connections um, with teachers means a lot to me because I feel like you can grow on a deeper level with them. Like once you grow older, like in middle school, you have the same teachers for a lot of subjects. So you're, while you grow, you're also growing with your teachers. So you could talk to them about more personal subjects. Rabbi Leaptek has made a difference in my life by like making the learning fun. I feel like I could stay in touch with Robert Lieb Ted because he was like also my advisory teacher and I feel like he would want to talk to, to his like students outside of school. Hello Torah has inspired me to be more religious and more spiritual. The things that they're teaching us and teaching me personally, I could connect to and I am going to continue to be that person. Friends at Hillel Torah are friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. I get so many opportunities at Hillel Torah to meet with friends and make new friends, and it helped us learn in a very fun way. We are all connected. Connected. Mechubarim. Connecting the dots. To each other. To our studies. Our hobbies. To our school. To our community. To the world around us. Le Am Yisrael. Le Eres Yisrael. To our teachers. Families. Friends. To our inner selves. Le Nishamot Shalanim. As we look back, we want to thank our parents, teachers, staff, administrators, and all those at Hillel Torah who have helped us reach this point. And as we move on to high school, let's keep the connection going. And always stay connected. Mazel Tov class of 2021. It gives me great pleasure to present to you the graduating class of 2021 Tafshin Pei Aleph. First row, please rise. Ami Weiss. Avi Chen. Toby Gordon Burston. Elisha Speicher. Itamar David. 
Kobe Angle. Ella Cacone. <laughs> Leah Ackerman. <laughs> Maytal Needle. Abigail Reeses. Aliza Shayevitz. Ella Perlman. Talia Linzer. Leyarina Brochin. Second row, please rise. Ezra Kamrav. <laughs> Avi Meyer. Loudon Weiss. Ami Seiko. Gabe Averman. Yossi Gordon Burstein. Avital Weiss. Kayla Nagel. Shira Marmor. Elia Sander. Simona Friedberg. Nava Dreitzer. Achona Chaviva, Sarah Lipson. Mazel Tov, the class of 2021. Mazel Tov. Okay, we now invite the graduates. Please turn to face your families. Graduates, it's official. You may now move your tassels from the right to the left. You may be seated. Along with their diplomas, each graduate just received a beautiful Tanakh gifted by the Heinous family that will help our students keep the Torah in the forefront as they move on to high school and beyond. Among our graduating class tonight, we have a number of families who will be graduating as well, and this is one of the hardest parts. The children tonight who are the last in their families to be graduating from Hillel Torah, that means we won't see you at the carpool anymore, sadly, sadly for us at least, are Gabe Aberman, Leah Rina Brochen, Ella Kakon, Sarah Lipson, Shira Marmer, Mazalto to the entire Marmer family on their upcoming Aliyah, Avi Meyer, Ella Perlman, Elia Sander, and Ami and Tali Weiss. It's been many, many years at Hillel Tower for all these families combined. Such great years. We're going to miss you so much. Please stay in touch and stay connected. In addition to our amazing students graduating tonight, we have another graduate to celebrate. After many years serving at the helm of the Hillel Torah Judaic Studies Department and pushing our Ivrit 
and Yahadut areas of the school to great heights, as you saw on display this evening in the Divrei Torah and in the video we saw. Mrs. Tamar Friedman will be retiring from her administrative role at the end of this school year. We're so grateful that she will be staying on in a part-time role, at least, going forward, supporting teachers, and helping us behind the scenes so that we can still benefit from her tremendous expertise and wisdom. However, we will greatly miss her in her current role. While an appropriate retirement celebration is in the works, it's gonna take a while for it to plan the right kind of party for Mrs. Friedman. It gives me great privilege to invite Mrs. Friedman tonight to share a parting message with our graduates. So let's give a hand to our youngest graduate, Part, the gown fits. I mean, how, the, the, the disadvantage of being the last speaker is that everybody said every single word that you ever planned to say, and now you just have to take it and mix it and put a little sparkle on it and just say the same message in words from the heart. So, dear graduates, as you graduate Hillel Torah, the most magical, caring school in the entire world, I look at you with teary eyes, and through my tears, I see an amazing, beloved group of young women and men who care for each other, who adore and look up to their teachers, their abeim, their educators, who are engaged in creative chesed in so many ways and who embrace the Torah and its pleasant ways in every aspect of your lives. I see your sparkling lights. With you this evening, I too am graduating. This is also my last year in the leadership team of our school. And I feel privileged and fortunate to be graduating and retiring my position alongside such an honorable group of graduates. When I came to Ilal Torah as a fourth grade teacher in 1983, you were not even born. You figured out Mrs. Kaplo was not born either. Some of your parents and teachers were young students in my classes. It's been a lo lo lifelong journey and I loved every moment of it. And there wasn't a day when I did not learn something new that helped me grow as a teacher, as a leader, and as a person. And I know that on any given day, in your years at Hilo Torah, you too have learned and grown so much. William Butter Yeats' famous quote has always resonated with me. He said, education is not about filling a pail, filling a bucket. It's about lighting a fire. Ooh, talking about fire. When I think about my own many years at Hilo Torah, what motivated me was always the lighting of a flame. My desire was always to ignite the fire, to draw out the inspiration, to bring the warmth of Torah and Yiddishkeit to the children's hearts, teaching them in turn to find the light in each child and to ignite it bright and proud. I recently completed Masechet Psachim, which starts with the peculiar words of the Mishnah. 
אור ל-14, בודקים את החמץ לאור הנר. On the evening of the 14th of Nisan, one searches for the chametz in their homes by candlelight. And the Gemara goes on to expand on the Mishnah and to ask, מהי אור? רב הונא אמר נגי, ורב יהודה אמר לילי. The Gemara asks, what is the meaning of the term אור? The Gemara provides two answers. רב הונא says, it means light. רב יהודה says, in this context, it means night. At first glance, you may seem to suggest that the word light here means that you should search for the chametz at the light of day, maybe at break, uh, you know, in the morning of the 14th of Nisan. But the second opinion says it's referring to the previous evening, the 14th of, of the 14th of Nisan, the night before the 14th of Nisan, when we search for the chametz. So on one hand, all means light, daytime. Daybreak. On the other hand, often all in our Jewish text and tradition means the night that precedes the light of day. Like Shabbat and all our Jewish events, calendar events, always start from the night before. And it's called all le. The Gemara brings several sources to show that all can mean night. It quotes the Pasuk that we say every day in Pasuk Ede Zimra, in Shacharit, Halelu kol kochvei or, let the stars of all praise Hashem. The Gemara comments that the stars in the night sky are an example of how night is defined by all. The, your eighth grade Maccabiah theme was Laila and Yom. As you prepared to present about your team's theme, you came to realize that Yom and Laila, Or and Choshech, are two sides of the same coin. There cannot be night without knowing light. And you cannot recognize light without the backdrop of night. Light makes way for dark, and dark brings forth light in your short life journey so far, and in my own long journey of existence, we have experienced time of painful darkness and periods of joyful light, both in our personal lives as well in our Jewish community, in Israel, and at the world at large. We are emerging from a dark year for our planet, the year of COVID. So many around us suffered, suffered loss and sickness. We had to compromise. We had to change the way, so many things in the way we live and the way we interacted with each other. During this entire period, our Koch Veo, the stars of the class of 2021, Taf Shin Pei Aleph, have sparkled and shone bright into the night. You have been strong and resilient. You kept growing and building your emuna, your faith. You continue to build relationships and do chesed. In the darkest of time, you learn to find light, search for good, for hope, for connection. Mechubarim. I have always been moved by the beautiful poem written by Rav Cook, which you heard about already twice tonight, which talks about the light in each of you. If you know the melody, you can hum. You need to know and understand that in each of you, a candle is burning. And no one's candle is like any other's candle. And no person is without it. Mm -hmm. 
ולהדליקו לאבוקה גדולה ולהאיר לעולם כולו. And each of you should know and understand that your life's work is to uncover the light of your internal candle and join it together with other lights to create a huge flame to light up the entire world. My wish to you, my dear graduates, is that you continue to discover and uncover the light within you and sparkle and shine it onto your community and onto the world. Our Torah, our values, our mitzvot, enhance the light to show us the path. As David HaMelech said in Tehillim Kufyuter, Ner l'ragli dvarecha ve'or l'intivati. Mazal tov and much atzlacha to all of you. Before you step off, Mrs. Friedman, the class of 2021 has a gift for you, a special sweatshirt from their class sweatshirt with your name on it, right, to always done. remember them. I now welcome Shira Marmer, who will deliver closing to Helene. graduation ceremony, I would like to share a few words. Wow, I can't believe we're finally graduating. From making Shabbos snacks in kindergarten to names not numbers in eighth grade, we have really grown. And look at us now, graduating Hello Torah, moving on to our next stages in life. What a milestone. I would like to say a parak of Tehillim that I think really fits this day. Parak Kof Gimel. Mizmor David, Adonai Ro'ilo Achsar, Bino Deshem, Yarbet Saini, Almei Menucho Yenahalini. Nafshi Yeshovev, Yanchini Bemagle Tzedek, Leman Shema. Gam Ki Yelech Begeit Zalmavet, Lo Ira Ra, Ki Ata Yimadik. Shiv Techa Mishan Techa, Hema Yenahamuni. Taruch Lepane Shulchan, Neged Zor Arai, Dishanta Beshem and Roshi, Kosi Revaya. Ach Tova Chesed, Yer Defuni, Kol Yemei Chayai, Veshafti Bebeit Adonai, Le Or Kiamim. In this parak, David HaMelech talks about how Hashem is always there for him, as it says in the first pasuk, Hashem Ruila Achsar. Hashem is my shepherd, I do not lack anything. Like a shepherd, Hashem guides us through life and is always there to help us, even during hard times. At Hillel Torah, we are surrounded by inspirational Jewish role models who teach us that Hashem is there even at hard times. Gam ki alch v'geitz al mavet, lo ira ra ki atayim adik. Even if I walk in the valley of death, I will not fear evil because you, Hashem, are with me. Unfortunately, this year has brought us many tragedies, and our teachers have taught us to respond to these events by asking what we can do to bring into these lights these times of darkness. Our eighth grade class has, has responded by saying extra to Hillim, learning more, davening for those in need, and doing more chassan. The prayer continues and describes that Hashem provides us with challenges, but also with support which David HaMelech finds comforting. Shiv t'chol mishan t'chol, hema yenach hamuni. Your staff and your support both comfort me. This reminds us that both the difficulties and support Hashem gives us are all part of His plan. At Hill Torah, we see a similar thing. We have been provided with challenges and a lot of support. Both of these have help, helped us grow. Um, there have been many times that we have been challenged in our classes over the years. Our teachers have always worked hard to support us and to help us learn from our mistakes, to grow as students and as people. Lamanu harbe mesarim bizvan shalanu behilo Torah, sheyecholim laadrich otanu bederach hanechona hayom uvaati. Lamanu shashem itanu bechol eit bachayim shalanu, behilo hevo tanu, berago seha topi shvilinu. Ani rotze lagi toda rabba lahan hala, lamorimu rabbanim, ulechol atzebet behilo Torah. תודה למשפחות שלנו ששלחו אותנו ללמוד בהילל תורה. תודה לכיתה ח' 
Hayitem Chavirim Mitzuganim Bechol Hashanim Shalanu Behilo Torah. As we leave Hilo Torah and move on to various high schools, let's bring the messages from Hilo Torah and to Tehillim Perik Kof Gimel with us. Know that Hashem is there even when we run into obstacles and only does the best for us. Let us, let us always look for ways to stay connection, connected with Hashem, as it says, Vishafti Yuvet Hashem or Yamim. I should dwell in the house of Hashem for all of my days. I would like to thank Rabbi Linzer, Mrs. Friedman, and Mrs. Coppolo, and all the administration, staff, and teachers for making our time at Hello Torah amazing. Thank you to our families and parents for sending us to Hello Torah and supporting us over the years. And a special thank you to the class of 2021 for being the here we, for being the reason we are here today. You have all been incredible classmates, and I will miss you so much next year. I feel so special and blessed to have been a part of this wonderful school, Hello Torah. As David says in the Tehillim, Kosi Rebaya, my cup is overflowing. Thank you and Mazel Tov. So beautiful, Shira. So beautiful, thank you. Thank you to the parent committee who helped with the balloons and the beautiful bags, to Melissa Perlman, Adina Shaivitz, Sigal Speicher, as well as to Anita Gelbart for all your help behind the scenes, and Mrs. T for your help with the graduation, the sweatshirts, and everything this year for our amazing class. In just a moment, we will join together for Hatikva, which will conclude tonight's program, after which the graduates will march out along the middle aisle, the way they came in. We ask all families to please remain in your zones. I think we're, we're okay until the graduates have finished marching out. Please rise now and join us face the flag of Israel for the singing of Hatikva. <laughs> 